We've got Glasgow again this year, man. How much do we need to thank Drew McIntyre for this? <laughs> uh, it's not for this one. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know if I need the thanks for this one. Maybe, hopefully, we're getting the ball rolling for bringing big events to the UK since I've been rabbiting on about it for about 15 years. But um, it's awesome. We've got so many now, and I mean, so many worldwide. You know, it's obviously part of the you know company's new direction the past couple of years of hey, we've got some really passionate fans all across the world. Maybe we should be bringing you know our big shows, our PLEs, all across the world and. You know, the, provided some of the greatest moments for just watching the fans, especially Clash of the Castle, it was number number one by far. But you see some of the other shows and just some of the fans, just how appreciative they are to get WWE for one. But then also, like we're used to traveling the world, hearing how appreciative they are and how loud they are, but to actually get them on camera and they know they're on camera and they want to compete with the rest of the world to show they're the loudest, it's pretty awesome. And we got France, we got Germany, and of course, Scotland's going to blow everybody out of the war. Sure. Rangers and Celtic fans coming together to prove we're the loudest and craziest on earth. I can't even imagine that in a unison. Talk of the town at the moment is obviously your contract. We've got Glasgow. We've just had Mania. Uh, we know you're front and centre of the posters. You don't have to tell us too much about what's going on there in the negotiations, but what's important to Drew McIntyre now when you're thinking about your future? Being happy at this point of my life and career. All that matters is I'm happy and I can get time with my family that I've not had for 20 years. So in terms of making a decision, is it schedule, creative? Those are the things that matter to you most at this point, do you think? I mean, it comes to creative. I can only control the controllable. And uh, obviously, as we've seen for the past, you know, almost couple of years, there's been a lot more leeway given to talent, a lot more uh, collaboration. It's been awesome, as you can see across the board. Uh, a lot of people breaking out and uh, an opportunity for myself to show you know, what I can truly do. Um, so, you know, I know that one is always going to be a case of roll with the punches, peaks and valleys, but there's more to it than just that. So we'll see what the future holds. I just know I'm in my prime and Drew McIntyre is not going to stop wrestling. You are in your prime, that, that much I do want to say. Have you felt that energy come to you over the past, I would say, past six months or so? It's really gathered some serious momentum at the right time, I guess. Business end of the season, per se, with uh, WrestleMania and the contract. Talk to me a little bit about feeling that momentum behind you again, which you really, really did have during COVID. But now you're able to actually feel it when you're in the arenas. Yeah, I mean, I had the chance to feel it leading up to Mania in 2020 just from the turn of the year, obviously winning the Rumble and heading up to WrestleMania, it was awesome just to be getting those loud reactions and loudest reactions and things going so perfect till they weren't. And obviously that, you know, meant I missed a lot of big moments that you need to kind of grow a character, especially at the top, top level. Having those moments on the big shows with the fans that we replayed forever. Most of my big moments won't be replayed forever, but it is awesome to finally have caught Lightning in the bottle once again, I guess, but you know, it's not on the dark side because I'm the only person that tells the truth and I never lie. Sometimes if my actions are a little extreme, I'd say put yourself in my position if you were a wrestler and looked like me and somebody pissed you off, would you not beat their ass like I do? Yeah, you would. <laughs> but you can't, so you don't. <laughs> I've got two for you before I know I've got to let you go. Just a quick pit stop today. Uh, I've loved all the interaction with CM Punk, obviously. Not the one where he cost you. I wouldn't say that to him, of course. But you going toe-to-toe -to -toe on the mic, that was an electric segment, wasn't it? With you guys, you have a week on Raw. Talk me through a little bit about that, because it's a different WWE too, right? Where you have the leeway to say more of what you're thinking. You've probably got bullet points, I'm sure, but you go toe-to-toe -to -toe with such a guy that's celebrated on the mic. And you're obviously being celebrated in recent memory on it too. It was about time, right? It was kind of a magical, well, I thought anyway, uh, a magical moment. Yeah, yeah I mean, i got to thank him for that, I guess. One thing I can thank him for is, um, you know, if he's got that microphone, you know, he's bringing his A game. And perhaps the first time we're in the ring together, he was still kind of finding his feet being back in WWE. And I think he realised, I know he realised, I could see in his eyes, this isn't the same Drew. And I had his number the first time we were in the ring together, and then I stomped his stupid little arm. But the second time, I could see in his eyes, like, right, I'm back. I've got my guns are all loaded. This is the CM Punk of old. 
And I knew, all right, I can either step up to his level or I can drown, and I don't belong at his level. So it was cool to have that opportunity to go back and forth and have people go, like, oh, my God, this is insane. It can't get any more insane. It kept escalating and escalating and escalating, and you have to be you know, quick on your feet. You have to know exactly who you are in this industry if you're going to compete at that top level. So I can say thank you to him for showing in that segment. Everybody said, wow, Drew just went toe-to-toe -to -toe with Punk in his prime on fire. Each other. Yep. And Seth obviously was part of the segment, added to the segment. It's became you know, somewhat of a legendary segment recently. Yeah. People just keep asking me about it and talking about it. The very last thing uh, I want to quickly say, WrestleMania, one thing Punk did say was he thought he was getting Seth. Did you have any idea of where you were heading before that? I had an idea. And all I kept saying was I want the title match. <laughs> I literally kept saying that for months. You didn't? You could have got in it? Would you have been a three-way maybe? Maybe. That's all I said. I don't care what the ideas are. I'm going to be in that title match. And I seen the door crack open a little bit, and I keep kicking it open every time. And I knew where we were going. I knew how motivated and how motivated I am right now, and I was going to make it happen one way or another.